Those other rings were good, but you've got lofty expectations. Time to learn something new. In the first two videos, we used extrusion and revolve to create our main ring. This time in on shape, we're going to learn something completely different, which is the loft tool. Let's begin. Before we move into the loft, we're going to look at one other technique that uses simple extrusion and chamfers to create our geometry. To do this, we're going to start a sketch on the top plane. A tool you may not have used is the polygon tool. There's two options here, but in our case, it doesn't really matter which one. So I'm going to go with the top one. I'm going to spin the camera around and then on this line, I'm going to draw my polygon. You can see as I rotate the mouse back and forth, it decides how many sides there should be set to. I'm going to go for six. We can dimension the sides or the circle inside to set how big we want it to be. My finger hole is 20.5 millimeters, so therefore I'm going to make sure this is at least something like 26 mils. Now it's a simple matter of extruding. Let's click our shape, set it to symmetric, so it goes above and below the middle line, not just on top. And then I'm going to go with that 26 millimeter dimension once again. From this point, I'm going to go to chamfer. On the top, I'm going to pick three sides that aren't adjacent. On the bottom, I'm going to pick the opposite three sides. I'm going to up the value here until it feels like I've got an interesting shape. Okay, this is nice and geometric and exactly what I'm looking for. I'm now going to draw a sketch on one of the small flat sides. First thing I'm going to do is use the use tool and then click in the middle of my shape and that's going to trace it to the current sketch. I'm now going to draw a circle which is going to make up the finger hole. If you want to save time you can type in the measurement straight after instead of going to the dimension button. Drawing a line on construction mode from the middle of here to the middle of one of our other lines should help us streamline things a bit. Now if I set these two to equal, it should position it exactly in the middle. I'm now going to extrude, select my shape and tell it to go through all. Removed of course. Okay, we already have a pretty interesting shape here, but let's push the boundaries just a little bit more by looking at the shell tool. Remember, a lot of errors can be removed by lowering the wall thickness. That's a really interesting shape without doing too much at all. I'm going to keep it. All right, time to loft. Let's create a fourth ring here. To do this, we're going to start a sketch on the top plane. I'm once again going to start with a polygon, but you can draw any shape you like. It's not recommended to use a spline tool. Instead, use straight lines and arcs. This time I'm going to go for a five sided shape, a pentagon. Before I proceed, I'm going to draw my center circle, 20.5 for my finger. If you like, you can dimension the outside as well to get it as tight or as loose as you want. This represents one half of my ring. What I need to do now is to create a plane above the other one at the thickness of the ring. I'm going to click on plane, then my sketch, and then change my offset to be my maximum thickness, which I decided was going to be eight. I can now start a new sketch on this new plane and hit P to hide it. You'll note that there's five sides here. You don't have to do another pentagon, but it's important to have the same amount of sides. These can be round or straight. It's up to you. I'm going to use the line tool and the three point arc tool to achieve what I want.
The last thing I'm going to do is click the use button and trace the cutout for my finger. We've got our two sketches, it's time to loft. The loft button is just along from the extrude button. What we need to do is select the two profiles one at a time. We're going to select down the bottom and you'll notice that this one turns red here. To get around it, we'll hit the little arrow to expand and then click on the inside as well. I'm going to click back on profiles and then do the same for the top. Okay, now we can see the basis of the loft tool. It basically takes two profiles and tries to join them up as best as it can. Let's try some more advanced features. First one I'd like to show you is the match vertices button. At the moment it's trying to match up this one to this one because it thinks that's what the closest ones are. You can force it to do something else if you like to. I'm going to click the vertice from one and then the vertice from another. Now the loft will be remade using that relationship. Like we have here, you can force your object to have twists and things of that nature by purposely mismatching the vertices. The next option we'll look at is the start and end profile conditions. If we change the start and end profiles to normal to profile, instead of coming out directly in a straight line to meet the other vertice, it tries to stay straight before curving in. If we do it to both of them, we get a really wavy pattern. You can change this number here to decide how much it goes straight until it starts to curve and meet the other one. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to hit the tick. The last thing we're missing is the hole. Fortunately, we've already drawn that previously. So let's turn on sketch seven again, go to extrude, and select our center hole. Now we can put it to remove and change it to through all and our ring is complete. It's probably a good idea to name these rings and assign the material like we did with all of the others. In the next video, we're going to use a separate program. So let's quickly cover how to export for that program. Whichever ring we want to work on, we need to right click and then go to export. If it's not already, change the option to STL and the rest doesn't really matter. Once you've done this, your part will download ready to import into the other software. We now have three very distinct ways to create our ring geometry. If you really want to mix it up, stay tuned for the next video where we really push the boundaries. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.